In this video of Oracle PLSQL, we are going to cover the exception handling. Basically, whenever a developer starts writing a PLSQL block, if it contains any syntactical error, that will be shown before the execution. But if there is something wrong during the execution of the program, then that will be considered as runtime exception, means the error which are occurring during the execution time. So, here we will see how to handle those exceptions. Let's suppose if we are writing a select statement in a PLSQL block and I have passed a condition which is not having any record into it. So in that particular case, I may get an exception. Similarly, if I have passed a, uh, any select statement with a condition without a cursor and if that particular statement is returning more than one value, even in that way, I will get an exception. Similarly, suppose I have opened a cursor, then I close that and in the close mode, I am trying to fetch the data. So it will again cause me an exception. So it doesn't matter what is the kind of exception. If we have an exception, we must handle that. So we will cover the exception handling for this purpose. So basically here, exception is an identifier which is raised during the execution implicitly or explicitly. Means Oracle server does have some predefined exception and if anything happens like that, it will give you the implicit exception. All right. Or if in a particular program, you don't want anything to happen. So in that particular situation, you can raise an exception explicitly as well. So for that, you can raise, you can use some procedures, you can use some keywords in order to raise the exceptions. So to write a particular exception in a block, we can include ex another block called exception block, which can be placed after the begin block if I want to put the exception handling code in my program. So as here, we can observe like we have two types of exception right here called predefined exceptions which will be invoked implicitly and other is the user defined exception which a developer has to raise explicitly. So as I already said in Oracle server we have some predefined exceptions and whenever those will happen it will be raised implicitly but otherwise if a developer doesn't want to something to happen we can customize some particular exceptions and we can define our own exception. So let's see practically how to deal with the implicit and explicit exceptions and how to handle them. So let's start practical now. So first of all, let's start working with the predefined Oracle server exceptions. All right. So here is an example where I have simply taken a couple of variables like variable for the last name and variable for the salary. Here's the data types using the type attribute. And now I'm taking the last name and salary for the employee ID 300. All right. So I'm putting those values in the couple of variables which I have taken and later I'm just printing that last name earns this particular amount of salary. All right. So basically in my current records, I don't have any employee whose ID is 300. So when there'll be no employee, then actually an exception called no data found will take place. Similarly, suppose if I would have passed the condition using the employee ID, like we're, em we're sorry, we department ID using department ID. If I'm passing the condition where department ID is equal to 50, then it will not be a single row. And I, here, as you can see, I have not used cursors. So there will be an exception called too many rows. All right. So in both the situations, if I'm getting less than one or more than one, I will get an exception. So in that particular case, here are the exception blocks. So here you can see there is an exception block. And since the exception is going to take is going to be raised implicitly, I don't have to raise, I don't have to declare the exception explicitly. So as soon as the record will be fetched, there will be no record with the ID 300. And this exception will took place. So uh, suddenly the program will be terminated from this particular line and will directly come to this exception block where it will be trapped and will be handled. So in the output, I should get no record. So let's execute it. All right. It's a silly mistake. I guess there is a 
spelling mistake. All right. So now it got executed successfully. And here you can see I got no records, which I have printed inside this no data found. So this is how this you can write any particular code and analyzing your code, you can predict like what could be the different exceptions take place in that particular code and you can just put a relevant exception uh, block here like when that particular exception if you can't imagine your upcoming exception so that on the safer side you can say when others means if there is any other uh, exceptions which you could not predict earlier you can just add this line at the end particularly and at least those exceptions will be handled. So this is how you can handle the implicitly invoked predefined exceptions. Now let's start working with the explicit exceptions means user defined exceptions. So in the user defined exceptions, what we'll have to do is first of all, along with the variables, you will have to declare the exception. So here I have declared an exception with the name E underscore invalid underscore department. All right. So this is the exception which I have declared. So anywhere when I'll take the name of this particular thing, the system will recognize that, okay, this is an exceptions and it will be treated like an exception. All right. So here, what I'm saying is update employees set salary is equal to salary plus 200 means for all the employees who are working in department 200, I'm incrementing their salary by 200. All right. But in my current record, there is no department for 200. All right. So if it's a select statement, as we have already seen in the previous example of user of predefined exceptions, so you saw like it caused me a no data found exception, but here in update, it will simply say like this zero records updated. All right. But here, if I want to terminate it as an exception, if I want to treat it as, as an exception, then what I have done, if SQL, which is the implicit cursor provided by Oracle PL SQL. All right. So SQL not found. This is an attribute not found. So if there is no record out there, then I will use raise keyword in order to raise this exception. So you can see E invalid department, E invalid department. All right. And then I have ended it in case if this particular statement satisfied, I have raised it. So none of the statement after that will be executed means there's no commit and nothing will take place. So the control will directly come to the exception block and we'll see the matching uh, condition. All right. So here in the exception block, there is one matching thing and I should get not such department exist in the output. So let's execute this one. And as predicted, not such department exists is in the output. So this is how you can start working with the user defined exception. What you have to do first, you will just, uh, define declare an exception with any particular name and then in the code in the main code section you will just have to check the condition when you want to raise that exception as soon as the condition got satisfied you can raise and you have to put a particular a relevant uh, when statement inside the exception so that your raised exception could be handled so this is how you can start working with the user defined as well as predefined exception handling in the Oracle PLSQL.